Welcome to another episode of Real Talk here in Halifax. I am Sandra Pike, your host, and today we have the lovely Ben Young joining us again. We are so lucky. There's good luck and bad luck. So before we get started, is the hair okay? Not bad. The shoulders it's not bad. are back enough. You're good. You're because good. Because I've been told that she picks on me sometimes, and she said I have the shoulders of a trout, so I got to make sure I get the posture right now before we get going on the questions. But there's nothing. No, you're really? good. Okay. You're good. You're good. We're good. So we're sitting here today because I wanted to have the stats, and I wanted to go over them with you. And you've been around the housing market like longer than I've been. I'm older. That's true. So. <laughs> Actually, we've both been around the housing market a long time. This could be, and just for the record, this could be any Friday night, this kind of conversation. We have two people in real estate. This yeah. is kind of what we do. So, yeah. And so, yeah, I've been around it a long time. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just going to go over the stats of what just happened in the Halifax market here in July. So, there were 446 homes that listed, and there were 346 sold. So, that was about 78% of the houses that listed here sold. The average listing price was $618,801, with the average selling price $610,000. So that was up from uh, June and up again uh, from May, but down from April. Now, out of the 346 homes that sold, there were 165 homes that sold under asking. We had 10 homes that would have sold over 100 grand and we had about 31 homes that would have sold at asking. Now, in all of HRM, let's say year to date, there have been 2,300 homes that would have sold. So we are down obviously from uh, 2021 uh, up to 2022. And the average price point right now is sitting at 589. And uh, you know, you look at Enfield Lance area, that uh, particular part of town is still doing incredibly well with all of its new construction. So when you hear these stats, Ben, you know, what are your thoughts? Like, what does it resonate with you? So I'm always uh, a little concerned about trying to look at monthly stats because there's so many swings in the market. And you look at what we've been up against recently with either wildfires or floods and rain and that. Well, that takes people out of the market right away. People are distracted. So trying to grab a month over month. Uh, I think can be a little dangerous in trying to read the numbers. And the number that I pay attention to a lot, and, and I'm curious how people, you know, what their interpretation is, but when they hear that, you know, the average home price, uh, selling price in, in the market goes from 600 to 625, do they assume that the market's gone up by that much? Or is, that, is there something else to that? Because it's, I, I, I worry that some people would look at that and say, okay, whatever it is, it's a 3% increase, my host must have went up by 3% over that last month. And that's not always the case. So I think you have to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, you, you and I looked at the stats and I said, just go look at the one month over month that had moved up like $25,000. But then when you looked at the mix, there just happened to be a higher percentage of, of expensive homes sold during that month. Which, Absolutely. And that's what was skewing the numbers. So I think that um, in, there's as much a story behind the numbers as there are in the numbers. And you need to take some time to understand them. Uh, I would agree, and to solidify what you're saying, so in April, we would have had four homes that sold over two million, and there were two homes that sold over uh, between 1.5 up to 1.9. Uh, you know, and then in, April, in May, there were only two homes that sold over a million, oh sorry, over two million. And June, there were no homes that sold over two million. So it really depends, I believe, on the product of what's selling and you know just because again you're right we if we see the market going up doesn't mean that the market went up in your particular area yes which is also a good point so it will give you trends and you can kind of look at things over a period of time and uh you know as you start to average them out or flatten them out then they start to make sense i mean it's been interesting you talk about us being in the market for a long time we both have been and Halifax pricing used to be really stable. I mean, you could look at it and it was like 2%, 3%. It was moving mm -hmm. and it was moving kind of across the board. You get a few pockets, maybe the south end we'd get hot for a period of time. But generally speaking, the product was all moving kind of at the same pace. And then when the shortage kicked in and the market went sideways over the last two years, I mean, it, it was upside down, in my opinion. And you could no longer look at a particular product and say, I'm just going to use averages. I think you, and you did a good job of this, I, and just 
I know only because we spend Friday nights talking about this kind of stuff. We're, we're real estate geeks, but we start to look at it and you do a deep dive into it. You really need to be surgical in today's mm -hmm. market to go look at that particular area and what's sold and really dissect the home itself. You know, what's the square footage? Where's it at? Is there any other? Like you have to be very, very surgical when you're doing your analysis and you can no longer rely. I don't think you can rely any longer on data that might be 18 months old because it shifted so much in eight months. It needs to be really current. Things have moved quickly. I say I would look at, I go to 30 day stats, then uh, if I can't find anything, you know, 60 to 90. But I'm definitely not looking at what happened this time last year or, or the year before. It's Remember I, I get on the rant about the property on High Rigger? Which rant? <laughs> Dear. Okay. But there was the one For clarity, on High Rigger. a few rants, so we just need to specify. Oh, High Rigger, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, there was one that listed for 250, you know, or 279 selling for 500. Then the next home, I think that would have sold last year was at 341. And oddly enough, I'm looking at one on the same street tomorrow. And it's in the, uh, now that's closer to 500. I haven't looked to see what uh, the house looks like on the inside yet. But just interesting to see you go from 500 to 341. Now it's back up to, you know, the high 400s. What are your thoughts of that? Like just in a span of a year and a half. I think that's to our point about you have to be like, you can't rely on old data. You have to go as current as possible and try and get as much and as many data points as you possibly can. And I mean, this is where you can, it, it starts to show when people are doing enough volume that they've got finger on the pulse versus somebody who maybe is not doing as much volume. So it's, it's a bit of science and art right now to mm -hmm. try and figure it out. You have to pay attention to it. And uh, six months is kind of the window I would want to look at if I were trying to do some price comparisons. Uh, interesting that you're talking about that. Uh, so there are 20, there's been 2,300 single family homes only uh, sold across HRM from January to the end of July. Out of the 2,300 homes, uh, 1,065 of them have sold below asking. Why do you think that is? Is it because the agents aren't doing their homework or is it because the way the market is? Or, you know, what are your thoughts? So I think, um, I mean, we had a huge escalation in the pricing. If you remember, we had, I mean, everything was going above mm -hmm. asking price. So the market needs time to catch up and people will start to price their homes accordingly. So in, in my mind, that that gap of going over ask is going to start to close as people start to adjust their prices. Mm -hmm. um, because there is a threshold. Um, there always is a threshold at some point. And then sometimes people just overshoot the mark a little bit. So it may be, and you would know this, like buyers obviously want to get as much as they can for their home and who wouldn't? I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's sellers, the, yeah. the seller story. You want to get as much as they can. And so sometimes there's a little bit of overshooting the market and pricing maybe a little bit higher because it, it's, everything is trending up and they mm -hmm. think it's going to keep going that way. And I would say the other part is that, you know, if you look at the stats on immigration, we had a huge number of immigrants in Nova Scotia that were interprovincial. So a lot of our immigration was coming from Toronto, Calgary, Vancouver, areas where the real estate that they were selling out of was worth a lot more money than what they were buying into. So they were prepared to pay more. And now um, you're getting more local buyers and the local buyers understand the market, maybe a little more discerning. They're not as in as much of a rush. Yeah. So I think that's helped flatten the market out, which is good. I think the market had to flatten out. We're in a better spot now. No, I agree. And, you know, if I were to look at, again, because, you know, I, I do this sheet every every yeah. month. That's what I do. And, you know, talk to people like yourself and uh, CMHC. And if I look at this, uh, you know, in June, when did we have the rate hike? Was that in June? Which rate hike? We've had a bunch of them. I know, but the last one, when did we have it? June, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, dear. So in May, 75% of the homes that were listing sold. June, 91%. You know, I'm not uh, that smart. You're supposed to get me the answers before you ask me the question. I thought we talked about that. <laughs> Carry on. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my God. What do you like? Uh, and 91% of the homes that listed in uh, June sold and 78% in July. So I don't think that the rates have impacted us yet for, um, you know, people are saying that our market is slowing down and yes, it has comparatively, you know, from what we were last year, but I just don't think it's the rates. I mean, now if you look at the way the market is, 
Um, this is the first time, I would say, since 2019 that people are actually traveling. Am I allowed to disagree with you on camera? I'm not sure what the protocol okay, is. Okay, we can get to that. No, okay. but I would say, you know, people, people are traveling more. Uh, and here in Halifax, we don't have the, you know, interprovincial uh, movement, right? And uh, so that would be a cause for the market to slow down. And because we just have local buyers. So I would believe people aren't really focused on housing the no. way they were. I mean, when you look at listings. So I think your question was, is the, it doesn't feel like the rates making a different an impact? I, 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 think they, I think they do, but I don't think it's the main thing. Okay, so that's a qualifier, so that's better. I would say the rate is absolutely making a difference for sure, but you're, I would agree with you as well. It's not the main thing. There's a lot of other things going on that would be impacting the volume that, uh, uh, of transactions that's taking place yeah. for sure. I mean, there's just not product to come to market. People don't have options. If no, they sell their house, no. where are they going to go? Yep. Um, it's not like they're going to move into an apartment because they're scarce and very hard to find. So unless they're leaving the province, it becomes an easy, easy decision. But if they're trying to like um, either downsize or upsize, they have to think ahead, and uh, yeah, it's not it's it's not an easy market to be able to do that. It's not impossible, but um, you know you just have to be prepared to maybe be patient, mm -hmm. um, and maybe you're not going to get exactly what you want, but you're going to get close. You may have to do some renovations to to make yeah. the changes to personalize the home. Like you, you just have to be, I think, a little bit more flexible in today's market. Mm -hmm. But the rate, um, I absolutely think the rate is making a difference. Um, but the rate increases have come in over a period of time. So it's slowly adjusting the market. So you're not feeling that great big, you know, they didn't come in with a one and a half percent rate increase. Yeah. That would have been dramatic. And then you would have seen a huge shift in the market right away. So we're seeing some shifts. We're just not probably noticing it because it's happening slowly. So if we look at the buys, that's still happening. Not as, uh, the only reason why it's not happening as robust is if you look at, we went from April, 503 uh, homes listing, May there was 647, June there was 540 homes, July there was only 446 homes. So is that because sellers are afraid of the rate? Is it because they're traveling? Um, why would you say, or is it because there's nowhere to go? I think, I think it, probably a lot, of, a lot of different reasons. So um, there's probably just not one thing, but I, I think that if my, I'm guessing this is just uh, Anecdotally, like looking, talking to people and trying to, I think that the um, limited options that they have, I think that's the biggest factor that's so weighing it, in here. But if there was more product? I think if there's more product, you would, uh, if there's more product to buy, like new, new stuff coming to the market and we just can't supply the market fast enough, with apartments as well, like some options on the apartment side where they could rent, I think if the supply chain um, offered some options, then you would see more homes listed. It's just not there. I agree, but the sales, while slow, is just because of the listings. Mm. Ish. Yep. But the listings are slow because oh, of yeah. the inventory. Yeah, it's. So, uh, I mean, I, I believe the only correction of this, the only correction of this, is that we need to increase the supply chain on rental and uh, detached homes. We just need more product. And that's happening, which is thankful. Yep. All right, I won't take up much of your time now. Um, what about later? Are you going to take up more time later? No, no, not Chores with that attitude. Tasks? Can not we get it. it on video? Then I just want to go on record that I'm, I'm free for the rest of the day. And, and we're, I hope we're live. Are we live so we can actually get this? No. Talk? We're not live. <laughs> that's a sin. Yeah, that's every day in my life. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way, truth, uh, truth be told. Yes. Anyway, thank you so much, Ben, uh, for taking the time. I know we're a little bit over the map, but... Again, it's just, it's really hard to dissect the market. It's an interesting market. I mean, it's uh, right now, I think you have to be on your game. You have to be willing to work a little harder. I like those markets. Yeah. That to me is more interesting. And uh, so, yeah, you just have to do a little bit more homework and be on top of it. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure.